You ever have one of those days where you talk to someone that you're close with or someone you see all the time and just one day they're completely out of character and you swear to God you had to have been talking to their evil twin? Well, maybe it was. Hey, what's up, bookworms and constant readers? Mike back to talk some more King, Stephen King, as we go back into the multiverse for the 12th published novel under his own name, and that is, of course, The Talisman from 1984. Obviously, uh, I don't want to say it's just uh, his name. You see another man's name on there, too. That is Mr. Peter Straub. Look, King moved to London in 1977 temporarily, and he became fast friends with Peter Straub. They became actually so close, they talked at times about doing a collaboration. And what that eventually became is The Talisman. And they went on to write a sequel to it, Black House, in 2001. And there are rumors that they do intend to visit this universe again with a third book in that, even though both men are approaching you know, retirement age. But uh, I don't see either one of them quitting anytime soon. But look, uh, I have never read this book before I read it just this time. And uh, a lot of people ask me why, you know, this is one of his most popular books, it seems like, amongst constant readers. So why did you wait so long to read it? What I have said in that uh, Great Awakening, as I put it, that video where I put out, uh, where I, I, how I discovered King and how I just he completely took over my life when I was a 15-year-old. And everything they had in the library, uh, they had all of his published works except for The Dark Tower, The Talisman, and Eyes of the Dragon. So that's the ones that I didn't read. Dark Tower, I obviously got into later. And the reason that I didn't read The Talisman is because after I read Dark Tower, I got so excited for that ending, and then I just I really didn't care for book six or seven so much. Like I said, watch that video for greater details, and I almost kind of had like a soft breakup with King. I didn't want to read anything fantasy-related that he wrote ever again. Now, I read Eyes of the Dragon last month, and I really, really enjoyed it. So did The Talisman follow down the same path of the beam of me enjoying his works of fantasy? Well, we're going to talk about it, but let's do like we always do guys let's talk about what is it about on a brisk autumn day a 12 year old boy stands on the shores of the gray atlantic near a silent amusement park and a fading ocean resort called the alhambra the past has driven jack sawyer here his father is gone his mother is dying and the world no longer makes sense but for jack everything is about to change for he has chosen to make a journey back across america and into another realm. On a desperate quest to save his mother's life, Jack must search for a prize across an epic landscape of innocence, and monsters, incredible dangers, and even more incredible truths. The prize is essential, but the journey means even more. Let the quest begin as we head into the dark of Mordor. No, it's nothing like that. There are many times when you read this book and you'd be like, yeah, I can see uh, how much these two gentlemen really enjoy Lord of the Rings. But uh, yeah, again, it's nothing like that any more than like a, a version of The Stand or something like that. But let's do what we always do, guys. Let's get into what makes it good or bad. I like to start with the good first. Uh, I think Jack Sawyer is a very good protagonist, 12 years old. I always say that I love the way that King writes kids. He seems to be one of the few who actually understands how children talk with jack it seems like he's very mature for a for 12 you know and i think that's because you know his mother is a former movie star or well, still kind of like acting but she's obviously her star has fallen uh, quite a ways over the years but i, I think a lot of that you got to assume that kids of, of, a, of a celebrity would kind of go about raising themselves or growing up a little quicker because of just the way that you're expected to act. So I, I didn't have a problem with that. There are lots of 12-year-olds I've met that have been like, wow, they're really mature for their age. And I get that a lot out of Jack in this. He's very mature for his age. He handles things a lot better than hell. Most people I know my age would handle uh, stressful situations. I think he does really well. But I think the biggest thing here is seeing... His mother's sickness from Jack's point of view is just heartbreaking. I think anyone who has had a family member that has been sick and is, is slowly dying of an ailment, be it cancer or be it anything like that, it's just been, this would be really tough for you to read some of these early parts. Uh, like there's a part where he, uh, he, he sees his mother smoking and realizes that she's smoking again because she realizes she doesn't have much time left. And for whatever reason, that just got me right here. I was, it was just terrible. Uh, my mom's a cancer survivor, but again, you know, I think about those first moments of, of knowing that and being like, oh my God, you know, just that, that realization, dealing with that when you're 12 and you, you know, your father's already out of the picture, that's, that's gotta be just devastating, you know? So I felt like he wrote those parts as well as you would expect, but I had to say, I, maybe my favorite part of this book is Wolf. I think Wolf might be 
the best quirky weird character outside the dark tower that king has ever written it's a, such a fun character in a way that i did not expect going into this now you're dealing with parallel realities and things like that so you expect maybe things are going to get a little weird and this is very very weird like i said in a dark tower way but in the best kind of dark tower way and in an innocence innocence of youth kind of way that i didn't really expect to latch on to this character i uh, when it first showed up i was like this is an interesting choice this is really going out there king and straub are hitting some of that good stuff aren't they because we don't know that this was in king's uh, very very heavy substance abuse times so uh, again you're kind of thinking wow this is out there steven uh but uh i, I don't know who has credit for creating some of this stuff? So if people are going to be like, oh, well, actually, Peter Straub thought that. I don't know this stuff. I didn't go into breaking it down like that. All I'm talking about this is as into the multiverse thing. So I'm going to give a lot of the credit to King here, okay? Uh, but with Wolf, it's just a character I absolutely loved. And uh, his relationship with, with Jack is one of the best. I, I love it. Maybe think about some of the kids in the Losers Club, about how, how they two got along. I really, really appreciated that friendship. And I felt like it was the heart and soul of the majority of this book the territories is very dark tower light in a way that uh you know dark tower obviously deals with parallel dimensions things like that there are other worlds in these this is kind of you know really getting to that uh you know the gunslinger just came out the year before but he hadn't really dove deep into the dark tower yet but you could see it was on the edge of his lips here because a lot of these ideas feel like what became the dark tower and it's hard not to appreciate those but you're also going to kind of look at that and be like yeah well i think he kind of did it in dark tower better if you read this before you read dark tower i can see how these things aren't going to bother you at all and i don't think they really necessarily bother me i love the idea of the territories i've always been fascinated when king talks about parallel dimensions alternate realities earth 2 things like that and this idea of being able to, tra to travel difference uh, when you're in the territories, like a, I think like a couple of steps in the territory is like a half a mile in our world. So I think like that just make for a really interesting way of questing across America. Uh, the biggest thing here, I think, is I love the idea of twinners. I thought twinners was a, just a fascinating idea. You know, we always talk about like you got like an evil twin or something like that. It's not always necessarily evil. Don't get me wrong there. But I do like that idea of there being another version of yourself and they could be completely different than you are you know they look like you they have your mannerisms but they might go about thinking a much different way than you do and that's just such a neat idea and then you're dealing with them like switching places or possessing it's it's deep it's really cool stuff and that's one of my favorite things about the whole book was the idea of twinners because uh, i think we've all encountered an evil twin <laughs> i want to say that the coming of age bits are strong as they always are i mean it's, it's stephen king i feel like that's his his forte is is scaring you and showing you coming of age through a, a child's eyes. I, I think that that's obviously going to be as good. Like I said, I feel like Jack was already a little... You want to call him Jake <laughs> because I got so many Jake from Dark Tower vibes. Uh, so if I accidentally slipped there, don't, 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 don't kill me. Uh, Jack, I, like I said, I felt like he already was pretty mature for his age. But there is plenty of coming of age stuff. You know, having to deal with, uh, with loss, tremendous loss, obviously, is a big one. And just, uh, you know, learning to be responsible for yourself. There's lots of stuff that he has to do to make it across America as a 12-year-old. That is stuff that you'd be like, ah, I couldn't have done that. Hell, I don't think I could do that now. You know, how could I do that when I was 12? I also think this has a very satisfying ending for the King Can't Write Endings crowd. So those people will probably give the credit to Straub on that one. I, I don't know. A very satisfying ending. Uh, a, a lot less bleak a lot less ambiguous than some of his other endings at this time were. Uh, I, I don't want to necessarily say it was a happy ending, but I think it's an end ending that will leave you satisfied with the journey that you just took, the 900 plus page journey that you just took. And that's going to lead me to the bad, as I just kind of uh, insinuated there, the length of this bad boy. This is the very essence of the word bloat. This book is so bloated. I definitely think the same story could have been told at about 60% of the length, maybe less if you're really being honest here. Uh, I feel like he gets off task way too much in this. I love the broad ideas. I love the quest. But it seems like, okay, it's time for that quest. Oh, well, here's a side thing we got to do first. Oh, okay, here's this quest. Here's 100 pages of these people that you don't care about. You don't understand why you're staying here this long. That happens about four or five times in this book. It's like, can we stay on task here? It felt like it was too... Now, obviously, with two different authors, you're going to think this. 
It felt like the King and Straw were both writing independent stories and they shared them and said, let's find a way to merge these together. Who cares if they don't really flow? There's lots of times where I feel like, am I reading the same book anymore? Because I feel like you could change Jack's name to someone else and it would be a different story. So uh, I wasn't wild about that. It, I feel like it really lacks any real direction outside of that main quest. And it's just, again, it just feels like two independent stories merged together. It just doesn't work more often than it does work for me. And that leads me to Richard. I said Wolf might be one of the coolest, uh, quirkiest characters he's ever written. Richard might be the my least favorite character I've ever come across in the multiverse. I absolutely hated this character with a fiery passion. And it's just all this dude does is complain and whine. It's like, say Frodo decided to take Jar Jar Binks with him to Mordor. That's how it felt. It was like, why is Richard here besides just being another obstacle for, for Jack to try to overcome? Did I call him Jake again? I'm sorry. For Jack to overcome. And it's just, it's, why are you here? It, that whole time, it's like, why are you here? Oh my God, please, someone shoot this kid. He is just obnoxious. And I feel like anytime... I'm starting to really enjoy this book. I'm like, oh my God, it's more Richard stuff. And I like like his backstory, but anytime he talks is just like, oh my gosh, it's like going on vacation with an ambulance. Please stop whining. So yeah, I just, I, I feel like Richard really, really is what brought this book down for me. Thankfully, he's only in it for about, I'd say the last third, but good grief, it makes a lot of the good stuff at the end really struggling to get through. And I I don't know what he was thinking with Richard. It's just, it's just an awful, awful character. I had never seen a character like that in a King book that is just really just made me just like rip the pages out while I'm reading it because it was frustrating me. So that's most of my bad stuff here. Look, uh, there are reasons why I think that you should read it. Obviously, if you like King doing a coming of age story, if you like Stephen King, I'm sure you like coming of age stories because he's brilliant at it. That's always a must. You must read any Stephen King coming of age story because no one does it as good. If you liked a lot of the ideas is behind the Dark Tower and you want a little bit more, maybe see like a little bit of the influence of what will become the Dark Tower, I think that you're going to feel right at home here. Uh, if you're all about journey before destination, yes, yes, Sanderson fans, I think that you'll enjoy this because if it's one of those where you just feel like, hey, I like a good journey. I don't care how long it takes to get there. I don't care about what the end goal is. You're going to be right at home. You're going to enjoy this. To me, it felt like it kind of beat around the bush for way too long. But I think that if you're that type who really enjoys a long quest adventure, you're going to have a good time with it. You can see the Tolkien influences here, just like you could in the stand. You can see where he was going with that. And again, I feel like this was a building block towards what eventually became the Dark Tower. Now look, if I had final thoughts here, I thought this had some really incredible ideas. Really, really some of the best stuff he's come up with. I just felt like the execution was greatly flawed. It missed the mark a ton with the execution. Like, why am I spending a uh, 100 pages in Oatly working at a bar? What in the world am I reading right now? Why am I doing this? Why am I at this... At this children's school that's very clearly corrupt this felt like a side one of those side stories from the preacher comic that made like no sense why are we spending this long in here and i love preacher by the way it's just it's just kind of what i kept thinking of it's like hey it's supposed to be kind of like preacher but preacher did it better uh things like that just it really just killed the narrative for me it killed the flow and yeah this book was a struggle for me to get through in a lot of places uh i know that a lot of constant readers they they consistently have this in their top 10 so it feels really weird for me to say this was a big disappointment for me it felt like uh, it felt like a story that he's done better so many other times. Like he did the questing across America, he did that better in the stand. He did the coming of age story, he did that better in it. He did the uh, the parallel dimensions, the alternate worlds thing, he did that better in Dark Tower. So this definitely feels like I said a building block, or just stories that he's done better at other other places. So yeah, it was kind of a miss for me. And you guys know I don't do that very much with Stephen King, and I don't want to fall into that trap of blaming Straub for the stuff I don't like and praising King for the stuff I do. I don't want to be that guy. What I have read is that they both intentionally disguise their writing style to sound more like each other. So to me that says, okay, so you're taking Stephen King's strength, which is his writing style, and telling him to change it up. Maybe that's why the book didn't really work for me. 
Uh, I'm going to give it a recommend because, I mean, it's king. It's a coming of age story. It's fantasy. fantasy. It's, of course, I think you should read it. I just It didn't hit all the marks for me that I was expecting. Uh, I don't think I had super high expectations going in. Like I said, I was still apprehensive about King writing fantasy just because of how I felt about you know Dark Tower 6 and 7. But I love Dark Tower 1 through 5. So I definitely, definitely know that the man can do it. And I, I definitely think that he, he, he can't. I, I wish this had been alone. I wish this had been like his baby and not shared it with someone else. And I, I, I want to assume maybe it would hit the mark a little more for me. But yeah, I can't think of another word for it for me except disappointment. And a big part of it is just distractions. And Richard, Richard's just awful, awful. There are a couple of multiverse connections, guys. So uh, there are a couple of uh, spoilers for books I haven't talked about yet or maybe books you haven't read yet. So I'm warning you now, nothing I don't think will break a book for you. But if it's something that you kind of want to discover on your own, I'd warn you to maybe uh, maybe skip past this part or come back after you've read the entirety of the multiverse. So let's get into it here. The Sun Dog. That is from the Four Past Midnight novella collection. In that, Kevin at one point dreams he's in Oatly, which is obviously the bar that I just talked about. In Firestarter, uh, there is a character named Rainbird, the antagonist of that book. And in this book, there's several mentions of Rainbird Towers. Now, I don't know if that's an actual connection or not. Uh, it seems like an awfully unique name to be using unless it's just you know king just wanted people to be like aha i see it i see it with the shining this is a big one here george hatfield is uh one of the students at thayer with with richard he is actually the at least by name that's the name of the student that jack torrance actually cut from the debate team so i wonder if thayer it, it i don't recall is thayer the school that jack torrance worked at because if so that's a great one that's a great connection there the tommy knockers this is a big one here in the Tommy, I actually kind of noticed this when I first started reading this because that was always something I found really, really weird in Tommy Knockers. Well, I mean, I found a lot weird about that book. You guys, that I can't wait for that review. That's going to be something. Uh, I, there was one part where Guard, he, he, you know, he's for one of his benders, he wakes up on the beach and he talks to a young man who tells him he can use the phone at the Alhambra Hotel. Now, obviously, you get that from like the other point of view in this. Now, I don't know if this is the same because we're dealing with multiple worlds and stuff. Don't know if necessarily this is Jack, but it seems like an awful coincidence that there's a boy on the beach uh, just like at the beginning of this book. So it's uh, it, that's an interesting tie-in. I see that one is actually kind of debated amongst the fans if that's actually Jack that he's speaking to or, or Jack Sawyer that we're speaking to. But uh, yeah, I think it is. And that's a, that's, a, that's a really cool one. Now, this one was kind of spoiler to me because I'm going to talk about Dark Tower now. Uh, the character Speedy Parker, uh, when you get to the territories, you actually mentioned his real name, is, or his twinner's name is Parkus. And so a, a lot of people have said, oh, well, he was a gunslinger. And I'm like, does it say that somewhere in this book? Apparently that is revealed in Black House. He actually has the, uh, the, the, the wood-handled guns and things like that. And someone actually says, hail gunslinger to him. And he says he's not actually a gunslinger. I haven't read Black House yet, so I, I can't really go too far into that one. But that's a really neat connection. And a lot of things I've, I've kind of looked up about that is that this was never really intended to be part of that, but that, uh, that, that Straub kind of mended some things to make it be more into the Dark Tower. So basically he got in Steven's ear and said, hey, let's make this part of the Dark Tower, I think. I don't know. I don't know. That's all guessing on my part. But uh, yeah, that's an interesting little connection there. And the, <laughs> this one isn't really a connection. I'm just going to say it was something that I could stop thinking about is where Jack and Richard are on the train in the territories when they're going through the Blasted Lands. I could not think, stop thinking about Blaine the Mono. I'm like, holy shit, if this train starts asking them riddles, uh, I, again, I think that this was just a building block for what he actually came up with in Wastelands with, with Blaine the Mono. So uh, the Blasted Lands, the Wastelands, the train, Blaine the Mono. Yeah, you see these, these things where it was, okay, this is an idea I had, but I'm going to build off of it for the Dark Tower. So... If anything, I want to give this book credit just for uh, clearly having an influence on where he was headed with the uh, with withdrawing of the three in Wastelands here in the next few years. And guys, that's all I got for The Talisman. Look, I'm not going to lie. It sucks that I didn't enjoy this as much as a lot of other people do. Uh, I don't know if it's uh, just expectations or what I don't think it was. It just... I don't think this is one that I would reread again because uh, it was kind of a struggle at parts to get through it. So, uh, you know what? No one thing is for everyone, guys, and even I have some misses with Psy King. It happens from time to time. So, guys, have you read The Talisman? What did you think? Drop in the comments and let me know, and I will talk to you on the other side in the territories.